I've been using power meters on and off for about 13 years, and in that time, there have been occasions where I've questioned their accuracy. Generally, it's because I thought the numbers were too low, but there was one period of about several glorious months where the numbers were so good, I did start to wonder if it was over-reading. And if truth be told, I suspect that actually it was. But anyway, Power to Max, who are one of our power meter partners here at GCN, have said that in spite of the renowned reliability and accuracy of their product, that it is just a common question amongst customers. How do you know if your power meter is accurate? Well, they've let us in on a little secret. There is a very simple test that you can do to find out. All you've got to do is work out the total weight of you and your bike, and then ride up a hill of known length and height gain. And then using that data, you input it into a spreadsheet, which will, using an algorithm, then tell you what your estimated power output will be. And they recommend that you head over to the website of a chap called Wolfgang Men, who it would appear is a very bright bloke, given some of the cool content that he's got on there. And his algorithm, which is free to use, is accurate enough to gauge the accuracy of your power meter. So, this has, of course, piqued my interest. I want to go and see if my power meter is accurate. This isn't exactly outdoors, I'll admit, but it doesn't actually matter. This is Lansdowne Hill in the UK. It is 1.3 kilometers long. It climbs 121 meters, meaning that the average gradient is 9%. Now, I'm gonna to have to ride it three times so that we can get three readings and all I need to do is record my time up it and of course my average power so that I can actually compare it later and then I suppose I can't escape the inevitable I need to weigh myself oh crikey yeah wouldn't you like to know eh? all right 84.4 Three runs down, back to the studio. <laughs> okay, back in the office, armed with our data, we're gonna fire up Wolfgang's website and input it. Now, although we can work out power very accurately, there have to be some approximations in there because although we know the work done in order to move a certain mass up a hill, and from that we can work out the power as long as we know the time it's taken in order to do that work, there are two extra variables when it comes to cycling, of course, aerodynamic drag and also rolling resistance. So the algorithm does take that into consideration and it adds them in. But we've got to remember that they will vary from rider to rider and also bike to bike. Riding up a hill, to a certain extent, it does negate it. And the steeper the hill, the less of a factor they will be. But don't go doing this on your mountain bike or indeed into a block headwind. Okay, let's input run number one. Length of climb, 1,340 meters. Height difference, 118. Total weight of bike and rider, 84.4. And then the time it took was 378 seconds, which means it estimates that I did 289.9 watts. And when I consult my actual power, which was 293 watts, so a difference of just four watts. And then I've also done it for runs two and three, a little bit ahead of time. Estimated 295, real 301. Estimated 297.9, real 303. So we can all see, therefore, that they are within the realm of accuracy. Power meters are generally rated to plus or minus 2%. Some aren't quite as accurate as these from Power to Max. And then factoring in as well, other things like the fact that there was a slight headwind on my climb means that I certainly don't have anything to worry about when it comes to the accuracy of my power meter. And it is clearly a very simple test that could put your mind at ease, or indeed, I suppose, confirm your worst fears. But hopefully it wouldn't be the case. And then also, you've got to remember, if you don't have a power meter, you can use this algorithm to estimate your own power output. Just bear in mind that weight is super important. So don't weigh yourself on your bike before you set out on a long ride and then do the test at the end, having sweated out a kilo and a half of water. 
that will skew your results. So do, like I say, bear that in mind. Make sure that you subscribe to GCN if you don't already. It's very simple. All you've got to do is click on the globe. And then if it's more content that you're after, well, if you click just up there, you can actually watch a video about how power meters work. Or if you click down there, we've got a very good one, putting power meters into action. Can they help you pace yourself on a climb? No, it's just down there. There's quite a lot of suffering in that one as well. I really like it.